up? How you doing? How's everybody out there? Hi, very good. Hi, no bad. Speak with us this time. That's awesome. Everybody can speak with us this time. So, today we're going to talk about music. What kind of music do you guys like? I like rock music and uh, sometimes I listen uh, to the hip hop music and mm. rock, hip hop. That's that's the same kind of music that I like. Who's your favorite? For me, I like I like every kind of music. You know, depend on my mood. Sometimes when I get upset, I like listening to a very hard music. You know, like rock and roll or yeah. disco music. You know, but when I get normal, I like um, you know romantic music. So it depends on my feeling. I feel the same way. What do you What do you think, Jacob? Dude, I love all music too. Yeah. <clears throat> what else? Who's your favorite group? Bob Marley. Bob Marley. <laughs> like relax, chill music. Yeah. What about you? Tell us about your favorite groups. What's your favorite? I don't know. I don't have a favorite. I know it's hard to decide, but. Um, to me, I don't have any idea, you know, like, I knew only group in Asia, which is in Korea. I like Girl Generation. I don't know you know it or not. No, no is it a K-pop group? <laughs> yeah, it is, kind of. Yeah. Uh, do you know Gangnam Style? I think you knew well, it. No, I've never heard of that one. <laughs> yeah. You know, even, even Barack Obama, they, they dance in the way of Gangnam Style. <laughs> hilarious um, and I like to listen uh, uh, I like to listen uh, reggaeton music too I like to listen to make a jam yeah. make a jam it's uh, that popular uh, reggaeton singer mm -hmm. never heard of him yeah, <laughs> yeah so Today we're going to also talk about some different kinds of music that we like and different kinds of music in general. So what are different genres of music? Different genres of music. Let's see, we already said rock, we already said rap. Those are like really big genres and they have a lot of subdivisions, like sub subgenres, right? Yeah. Pop, Ivan says. Mm -hmm. Country. Death metal. Death metal. That, of course that was Schweizgar. <laughs> He's back. <laughs> Schweizgar. <laughs> Welcome back to the circle, my So, friend. yeah, pop music. A lot of people say, they try to categorize pop music or put something into this category. Pop music is whatever's popular, right? Yeah, that's why it's called music. pop music. So, like, any genre could have pop music. I don't know, but they only come from specific genres, though. But I guess, how? what would you, more appropriately, more than pop, What's a better name for songs? Top 40, by top like, 100. By like Britney Spears and Justin Timberlake and other stuff. Like, it's like specifically made to be pop. No, like, I would say... Well, look, Vicky hit some more genres. Punk, punk soul, punk, soul Olga. Hey, Olga. Funk. Ah, there we go. Yeah. We were listening to, what was that, yesterday? Yeah, yesterday. We were listening to some ska. Old 90s ska, too. Yeah, electro, R&B. Mm -hmm. So, okay, maybe you guys can help me, because uh, when I was growing up in the United States, I didn't really listen to a lot of electronic music. What are some different sub-genres of electronic music? So I know, like, House, uh, let's see, what else is there? My One of my friends just swears by this kind of music. House, Deep House, what else does he have? Dubstep, yeah. Uh, what else? Actually, I think I can put on a dubstep track right now. Let's try to put on the dubstep track. Here you go. How many of you have already seen this video? Have you seen this video? 
send you the link in the chat. Yeah, this is the dubstep of Skrillex. I think they're like the most popular. He, dubstep. yes, he it's is just one guy. Just one guy, Skrillex. But they always have some like similar characters in the music videos. Mm -hmm. and all their music videos are really, really well done. Really yeah, absolutely. Have any nobody nobody out there has answered me yet? Have you seen this video already? No, for me I haven't seen it. Let's watch a little bit more. Today we're going to be talking about how music does this to you. Different types of music and its effect on our psychological state and how we understand what's happening around us. <laughs> I'd say this is a perfect example because it shows children being affected by music. I would say yeah. of, of everyone, children are the most affected by music. Really? Yeah, haven't you heard the thing about like Mozart like affecting babies' brains and making sure. them smarter? Sure. Well, I think it does it has the same effect on us with different chemical responses in our body. Yeah, I don't know. Like I, I don't know what kind of music you are playing, but I do like it. You know, when I'm listening it, um, I feel like I want to shake my body. You know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it makes you want to dance. Makes Absolutely. You wanna move. Uh, uh, but like today, but think about this: our parents and generations before us they had completely different kinds of music. Yeah, you, and they also moved and, sh and shook and danced, right? Well, you give this music to like our parents, and they're like, "What the f is this?" Yeah, yeah, country music. Some people dance to country music. Classic like rock. Come on, classic rock. Yeah, absolutely. So let's so. Keep an eye on how they show the psychological effect of music in this music video. I like the video. I think it's. I think it's pretty creative. I think. I think uh, she was talking about the music. Yeah. So let's see. What did people say about it? it? Makes me feel like killing, not dancing. Have to dance like a possessed person. Oh, Batman's back. Batman. Yeah. Hey, we Batman. Have all the hall stars here tonight. I says <laughs> crazy people listen to this. Gina says I don't like it at all. Okay. Well, everybody has different tastes. So actually. How many of you out there are musicians yourselves? Me. <laughs> I'm not. No. Yeah, I, ha I have a guitar, but I don't know how to play it. Could, could you like play the drums for us? I bet you could. No. But I, I can sing it like oop 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 yeah. style, you know, like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's cool. Uh, oh yeah, you played drums in a rock band. That's pretty awesome. What was the name of your band? Yeah. So uh, one person says I'm a good listener. <laughs> I think yeah, listening to music is just as important as playing music because uh, it gives you that feedback, you know. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And you have to know that somebody other than you can appreciate this music and that you're doing something. 
you can play by yourself, you can play horrible stuff and still like it. But. Yeah. If you're not playing for somebody, then it, it's different. The music's completely different. Okay, so what, what? let's talk a little bit about music theory for those of you who know how to play an instrument. Uh, I don't know about where you're from, but when I was growing up, when I was going to school, I used to uh, play an instrument because almost everybody in the United States learns how to play an instrument or how to sing at school. You take different music classes, different courses. And uh, for me, I think it was fourth grade when I had to choose an instrument to learn. So one day, me and the rest of my class, we went into uh, this little like storage closet that they had at the school. They had a bunch of instruments, all different kinds of instruments. They just pulled out all the instruments and said, which one do you want to play? And you just point at the one you want, and you try to start playing it. So like, the first one I picked was the trumpet. And I tried to play it, and you know, like you have to like spit into the trumpet when you play it. And I couldn't play a trumpet at all. I just couldn't like get it to make any sound. They're like, okay, maybe this one isn't for you. And then I picked up a saxophone and started playing it, and like it worked out a lot better. I could I could make sound out of it better. So I learned how to play saxophone when I was in school. But then like I uh, then I met some guys who had a had their own band, and I started uh, hanging out with them. And I started teaching myself guitar. So. Uh, throughout high school, I played in some different groups, rock groups, and I played guitar, bass guitar, did vocals, backup vocals, and uh, it was a really good time. And then when I was 17, I started getting into hip hop and rap music. And I understood that in rock music, you need a whole group. You have to depend on a lot of other people. But in rap music, the music is already written, and you just focus on the lyrics. And there's a lot more creativity in the lyrics, or at least you have the opportunity to express a lot more ideas uh, in a short, in the same period of time. So rock tracks are usually more repetitive uh, than, uh, than most rap songs, for example. And yeah, of course, a lot of rap songs because of the culture around rap and hip hop, uh, a lot of those songs, they don't really have a great meaning or a lot they say a lot of stuff that uh maybe catchy yeah it's just catchy or or it's just um what i want to say provocative yeah, yeah. Uh, but but in general there are more lyrics in a rap song than in a rock song and therefore the person has a lot of opportunities to express himself and doesn't have to rely on a lot a group of people to make the music but yeah. you still have to rely on a group of people yeah. <laughs> well, uh, you can do it more independently. That's what I'm yeah. saying. So, that being said, let's talk a little bit about music theory. I'm going to show you some pictures, and you're going to tell me what these things are. They have the names. Well, they have the names. I guess, I guess that's going to be pretty easy. Uh, that's a whole note. It looks like a letter O, except it's not. Yeah, you explain that note. Huh. Oh, <laughs> uh huh. Whole note. Potato. Yes, it gets four beats. Oh, swish gosh, swish gosh, swish gosh. Yeah, four beats. Or for those of you who don't know anything about uh, music theory, but you know about rap music, this would be this would be one bar in rap music. So, next, a half note. Half note is half of a whole note. Uh, no. Really? Next, quarter note. Next, eighth note. And if we have two eighth notes, <gasps> they can be combined or beamed together, as they call it here. Yep. Icky. Feels like I'm back in school again. Well, that's why they call it a video lesson. <laughs> oh, no. Eighth notes and eighth rest. I, I completely forgot about the rest note. Uh, the rest note. Yeah. But, I mean, uh, as in speech and music, pauses are as important as notes. Yeah, because you can't be playing music all the time. 
So what else? There should be a 16th note somewhere, right? Somewhere around there. And find it. That's an eighth note. Here's counting eighth notes. A one, and a two, and a three, and a four, and a one, and a two, and a three, and a four. In four, four time. Oh, uh, yeah. So, as you see in this picture, first of all, we have, uh, what is this clef called? Clef? This, uh... Treble clef? Treble clef, yeah. Treble clef, and then we have four, four. Uh, this four, four means that there are four beats for every bar, basically. Mm-hmm. Or what do you? Uh, I probably four beats for I probably didn't say that correctly. Bar. It probably has a different name here. Uh, so this is called four four time. Most uh, music that's easy to follow is written in four four time. There we go. There's some more notes for you. So we have the sixteenth note. Thirty second note. 32nd note, and I believe this is a 64th note. Have to be. Yeah. So, since we talked about all of that, let's go to something a little more sophisticated. Oh, holy. It's invisible. It's, yeah, why is it invisible? Okay, that's not cool. Let's go to the next one. Okay, here's just like all kinds of different. All kinds of different symbols. Let's see. If I if my Italian serves me correctly, this is um, fortissimo mm -hmm. on the bottom, and then it's fortissimo. Uh, what's this? Mezzo, for, uh, mezzo forte, mm -hmm. like mildly loud. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Uh, let's see. What else? Some of these I don't, I don't know. Uh, there's uh, pianinissimo, the last one. And mezzo piano, I think. Uh, I don't know. Maybe you guys remember the stuff better than I do. Forte fortissimo. Yeah. What is the uh, S F Z and F Z? I don't remember the what what Z here means. Maybe you guys do. Ah, S is uh, staccato. Mm -hmm. Staccato fortissimo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's different time signatures and clefs. Mm -hmm. So these are different musical notes. All right, let's go to something else. How about another interesting music video? Uh, another music video, again, it's in the style of dubstep. I don't want you guys to think that I'm a huge dubstep fan. These are just like the only videos that I know, but they're done really well. So that's why I like to watch them. So first on though. Yeah, what's up, Jay Lee? Nigga, what's cracking? And what you doing? What's going on? What's happening? <laughs> Nowadays, I'm <laughs> pimping the mat and <laughs> selling cracking. Nigga, you still rapping? What up, this? I hang with the hardest motherfuckers. I got rhymes by the buckets, make you niggas wanna. So, this group is called Dope Dod. The track is What Happened. And have anybody out? Have any of you guys out there seen this video already? What do you think about this video? Here, I'll send it in the chat. The the way that the video is shot, the effects that they use in the video, the editing of the video, awesome. You have to watch it. I'm the epitome of God gifted When I busted my first rap, the whole planet shifted Your mind to the next best hemisphere Next level shift, so you best to just step in here I got flavor, mad hip-hop I confront in the roughest neighborhood and I get shot I black out When niggas start hating shit Run over your crew like the new England Patriots the craziest But I'm also the laziest Never turn on the TV so I don't know who Jay-Z is What happened to rap? In the 2-0 era, what are you getting? 
getting worse, see I'm only getting better Niggas too old, J Young and Russia Put them under pressure, Professor Tashi What happened? Dub D.O.D. became the illest What happened? Phony MCs is getting finished What happened? You face defeat and we the winners Wicked with the lyrics in a minute, you're diminished I hear people say back in the day he wasn't like this yeah, that's an awesome video too. What about you guys? What are some good videos that you know about? Beauty, cool. Beauty, cool. <laughs> I I don't think that was his answer to our question. Well, I know who that is. Who, Najib? No, Najib. No, Beauty Cool. Ah, you cool. remember Beauty Cool? Uh-huh. No, 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 not dubstep bands. Any any bands like good videos though. Not only not, not only that the music is good, but the video is good. Cinematically beautiful. Let me show you another example. It's it's another example of electronic music, but uh, maybe you've heard of it before, maybe you've seen the video. It's just creative video. But I have to warn you, before you watch this video, uh you will not be able to unsee what you've just seen. So, so if you don't want to watch it, make sure that you turn away or uh, or close this window because you can't unsee it. So Chris, you know it's about to happen. The big bad wolf. Yeah, I think a lot of people are really, really, really upset that we put this video on. You cannot unimagine that ever. Never. Never. Yeah, but you know what's interesting about this group? Almost, I think every song that they make only has like one line. Like this one is just the big bad wolf, the big bad wolf, the big wolf. They have another one, Barbara Streisand. Really? Barbara Streisand. Yeah. And, and you wonder how songs like that can just get played so much that they become popular. Yeah. I mean, it's ridiculous. ridiculous. It's like, like, why? Listen back to 90s American pop music. Seriously. I mean, you have, like, different sides of it. You can go, like, Britney Spears' side or, like, Limp Bizkit's side, whichever side you want to go to. But the top 40, I mean, any year in the 90s. Ugh. So let's see. Lily, oh, yeah, no, we didn't, but... Okay, so Chris, we're gonna find out what happens. Yeah.
the big bad wolf. The big bad wolf. The big bad wolf. Oh god. Oh god, everybody. I'm sorry you had to see that, but it happened. So <laughs> You wanna, maybe I should show them some of these uh, other kinds of videos. Yeah, the little bit more productive videos? Yeah, something more in, informational, mm-hmm. educational. Educational and informational? Informational. It's not That's like an infomercial, is it? No, 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 oh, that, I, shouldn't have, I shouldn't have used that word, huh? Okay. Some, uh, yeah, I see you guys like that video, so. Thank you for the raffle cup. That was Duck Sauce, Big Bad Wolf, or The Big Bad Wolf. So. How does music affect us? And what what is music? Music is just vibrations, right? Yeah, if you classify sound as vibrations, but that's your voice too, so that wouldn't work. Specific right. vibrations, like in a certain pattern. Yeah, and there's even like a type of, it's not really, I guess it's a, a, a type of music, it's called spoken word. Oh yeah. Where words are rhythmically spoken. Think about stories. Yeah. A good Poetry. storyteller uses intonation to, to tell a story, like music, and even like when you, when you, uh, <laughs> somebody's writing here. It was weirdly creative. It was really freaky. Yeah, I it was. Agree. It was greatly freaky. <laughs> freaky. <laughs> Ugh, I'm flabbergasted by that. Well, uh, I think that that music, th- these vibrations, they affect you, your mood. And they can actually cause chemical reactions in your brain. Let's let's see what the experts say. Let me start with the observation that most of the sound around us is accidental. Much of it is unpleasant. We stand on street corners, shouting over noise like this and pretending that it doesn't exist. Well, this habit of suppressing sound has meant that our relationship with sound has become largely unconscious. There are four major ways sound is affecting you all the time, and I'd like to raise them in your consciousness today. First is physiological. Sorry about that. I've just given you a shot of cortisol, your fight-flight hormone. Sounds. So this guy kind of talks a little fast, so I'm going to uh, recap on what he just said. I'm going to rest- uh, restate what he said. So music has a uh, physiological effect on you, and... He said that this sound, for example, could shock someone. Mm-hmm. Affecting your hormone secretions all the time, but also your breathing, your heart rate, which I just also did, and your brain waves. It's not just unpleasant sounds like that that do it. This is so. It has a frequency of roughly 12 cycles per minute. Most people find that very soothing, and interestingly, 12 cycles per minute is roughly the frequency of the breathing of a sleeping human. So, so he said that this uh, recording of ocean waves crashing against the shore. Uh, this is at 12, what did he say? 12 beats per minute. minute. Yeah, BPM. And he said that that's roughly the same BPM as a sleeping human. A breathing, breathing of the sleeping Breathing of a sleeping human. It's pretty interesting. It's a big <laughs> resonance with being at rest. We also associate it with being stress-free and on holiday. The second way in which sound affects you is psychological. Music is the most powerful form of sound that we know that affects our emotional state. What about you? How emotional do you get from music? You can have sad feelings, feelings of happiness, feelings of anger. What else? Maybe even fear. For example, if we if we consider uh, the music in Psycho from the shower scene, then we can uh, think of something that really scares us. Like this. So now that, so we, now know, that we know... That's not what happened. That's not what happened. <laughs> Sorry, having some difficulties finding this video. There we go. So, right now, it just looks like a woman's getting in the shower. There's no music. It's just kind of like a usual action that everyone does at home. But listen to the music that plays in just a second.
So as you can see, she's in the shower. Somebody just entered the room behind her. You can see it through the shower curtain. And listen to the music. Did you hear that? That's yeah. just some freaky, freaky music, right? And without that music, the scene probably wouldn't be so scary. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. She so what else did he say? This is guaranteed to make most of you feel pretty sad if I leave it on. Music is not the only kind of sound, however, which affects your emotions. Natural sound can do that too. Birdsong, for example, is a sound which most people find reassuring. There's a reason for that. Over hundreds of thousands of years, we've learned that when the birds are singing, things are safe. It's when they stop you need to be worried. So he said that when birds are singing, this sound makes us feel safe. And when birds stop singing, that's the real time when we need to be uh, worried about something bad happening, right? Yeah, that's why deers listen to birds. Deer listen to birds? Yeah, deers listen to birds. So if you ever go hunting, play bird song. Cool. The <laughs> third way in which sound affects you is cognitively. You can't if understand two people, people talking at once, or so in this track. case, one person talking to twice. To the other one. You have to choose which me you're going to listen to. So when many... But like Chris, if we were say, like talking at the same time, yeah, you think that might... They probably I wouldn't understand I think it would probably us. cause some problems. Yes. And we have the Insidious music video. Quite odd. Yeah, so I see you guys have sent a lot of messages here. Yeah, birds make you feel easiness or waves. Uh -huh. Associated with things. Yeah. So he's saying that it affects us cognitively because we can't focus on a lot of things at the same time. We have a very <laughs> small amount of bandwidth for processing auditory input, which is why noise like this is extremely damaging to productivity. If you have to work in an open plan office like this, your productivity is greatly reduced. And whatever. Do any of you work in an open plan office? Open, like, office, office? Like, open plan office. Yeah, where there, desks are, there aren't everywhere. a bunch of walls. Yeah, not a bunch of rooms, but just... Like Lots of desks. 3,000 people. A lot of big companies work like that. A lot of them. And, yeah, I think that it's difficult to work in that atmosphere. It definitely would be difficult for me. Number you're thinking of, it probably isn't as bad as this. You are one third as productive in open plan offices as in quiet rooms. And I have a tip for you. If you have to work in spaces like that, carry headphones with you. With a soothing sound like birdsong, put them on and your productivity goes back up to triple what it would be. The fourth way in which sound affects us is behaviorally. With all that other stuff going on, it would be amazing. So yeah, sound affects our behavior. I heard recently that termites, when they're eating wood, mm -hmm. if you play rock music, they eat it like three times faster or something like that. That's ingenious. It's crazy. Like, but just those vibrations, you know? So if you played soother music, they would eat your house slower. Hmm. Hmm. behavior didn't change. So ask yourself, is this person ever going to drive at a steady 28 miles per hour? I don't think so. At the so unfortunately, the audio in this video is a little bad, so we're going to go to the next video. But yeah, he was saying that when you drive, for example, if you listen to some, some I don't know, Heavier, heavy music, more aggressive music. Then you're going to drive more aggressively. I mean, it's kind of common sense, but most of us don't think of it that much. No. I mean, I still drive listening to death metal. Just like Squizcar. Squizcar, do you drive listening to death metal? I don't know if he's still with us. He hasn't written anything in a while. Squizcar's there. All right, so let's check out the next one. Hey, guys. It's Corsant. As you may have noticed from just the title, Hey guys, it's people and tasks, the three variables as I like to call them. Because of the scope of the research I'm doing, we're going to focus just on music right here. In the field of research, there's a lot of different conclusions that people have, again, because of the many variables. For example, in this study by Anderson, and I quote, musical distraction may be detrimental and it may be helpful. So we have all this research done by different people that leads to different conclusions because of the variables that I mentioned before. 
So let's just break down music. First, let's talk about genre. In the past, we've learned to use genre as a categorization tool. You know, books, music, reading, movies, you got superhero movies, you got dramas, you got comedies, you got rom-coms, all kinds of stuff. And when you get into this field of research, we start to treat genre more as a tool. People will use genre and say, okay, this genre is a way to communicate with other people in So guys, how many of you out there have friends with the same musical taste that you have? I mean, I'm, I think it helps, like, because you need something in common to be friends about, yeah? But, but when you say, like, a lot of people have, like, musical taste in common with their friends, the majority of people. So Lily, Beauty Cool has. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think that it's uh, natural. Vicky doesn't. Vicky, why not? <clears throat> Only two. Yeah, she listens to some weird music. Oh, well, yeah, possibly. Hmm, there was an explanation where two groups of drivers were tested. One of them was listening to metal or rock while driving. Yes, we've, I'm pretty sure everybody has heard this. Listening to music in the car can do stuff to you and make you drive back. Yeah. But I think it's... So that's what this guy in the video is talking about, right? Yeah. Past performance affected by music. Mm -hmm. We actually, when I was studying psychology at my university, we did research on smells and how they affect your performance of driving. And we found out that some, uh, some smells actually make you more alert. And therefore, like, if you're tired and you're driving, you can like, like uh, have like, a little uh, container of this smell and smell it, sniff it real quick, and you'll become more alert. Like gasoline? <laughs> so there's two ways to look at genre when we're talking about music and how it affects people reading. One way we could talk about genre is the way we used to, as a categorization tool. We have rock, pop, country, ugh, ska, punk, all kinds of stuff like that, just like we have different movies and books. Those different categories of music often have different characteristics. For example, some music may be really good to get you pumped up and ready to do work. You listen to some A Day to Remember before you write an essay, you're going to get blood pumping. Day to Remember. What is that? The scat. Yeah, it's just rock band. Other music is good to relax and go to sleep, like that didgeridoo rain stuff that really chills you out. That's great. Also, these different genres attract different groups of people, which then affects the people variable and not just music. Because the people that go to a rap concert are a lot different than the people that go to a country concert. So, like I was talking about before, the people who hang out because they have the same music taste tend to be classified in, like, different groups of people. Yeah, but like, if you have a friend who listens to a different kind of music, you get influenced by what he listens to, too. Well, of course. Chills you out. Hmm, yes. Makes you relax. Literally. What's the next video? Those people, obviously, oh, like I said, video? are different while they... Next video? Yeah. This guy? Ah, uh, this is about kindergarten children. Yes. This is pretty funny. So, pretty cool. As you can see, I think in the beginning, they were like, okay, we're going to play a song for you. And they get wild up. And as you can see, they just slowly calm, relax. It's a little different than Big Bad Wolf. Yeah, definitely a little <clears throat> bit different. All right. Let's see if it changes.
So it's definitely interesting to see how kids move to music too, because they feel the same vibrations. But I have a question. Do kids dance to music because they feel the music or do they dance to music because they've seen a, an example from adults and parents of dancing? Do people naturally just move to music or... Well, yeah, of course. Maybe in movement, like in, in the, how fast they walk or how fast they talk about something, but like dancing, you know? Look at the cultural differences and traditional dances and the music that goes along with those dances. You mean like river dance or something? Yeah, like river. It doesn't matter any of them. River dance. We should have shown them a video about that. Let me find it real quick. Yeah. Do any of you guys know what river dance is? I do on my rush. <laughs> Let's see. All the river dance videos are a million years, a million hours long. Let's check out a river dance video. I actually had the pleasure of going to a river dance competition. Are you serious? Yeah. It's like different dances again and again and again and again. I've just Crazy. seen family do it. That's it. They go out there with like three or four people, depending on what like beat they want to tap. If your favorite makes you cry, it is because it is literally changing your brain chemistry. So here's another more educational video about the effect of music on human. Resonate with the beat of music, and that makes your breathing and your heartbeat actually try to match the beat of the song. Now humans and songbirds are the only two kinds of animals on earth that this happens to, which means on some fundamental level, we are wired to respond to music. Now this works in a lot of weird ways. It's been shown that listening to pleasant music boosts your serotonin, which is the brain chemical responsible for good feelings and regular bowel movements. So double score. Processing music is one of the few regular daily activities that we participate in that involve both hemispheres of the brain. You know, everybody usually has a dominant hemisphere, you know, that whole left brain, right brain thinker theory, but people who study music tend to use both hemispheres of their brain more, making them better at lateral thinking and creative problem solving. Listening to music also engages your hippocampus. Now that's the bit of your brain that handles long-term memory storage. And that's why listening to old songs sometimes brings back memories that you've forgotten. Even somebody with Alzheimer's and dementia can have recovered memories through listening to music. Now so yeah, I really like this guy. He speaks it right on the spot. Very clearly, too. Very clearly, very accurately, everything's correct. So, music can really help us long term. Absolutely. So you should listen to music more. But then again, Listening to music too loudly can damage your hearing. Well, of course. That's a physiological effect. <laughs> Maybe that's the, the effect of the volume and like the waves and the uh, vibrations being too loud, right? Mm -hmm. Shakes your ear bones apart. I think this guy has another video about how the perfect pop song is made. So now that we know who won the Grammys, a lot of people are saying it almost feels like there's a f in the Grammys. A lot of people are saying it almost feels in the Grammys. A lot of people are saying it almost feels like there's a formula to making a pop song, and that is because there is, sort of. Anthony here for D News, and a video that's been going around for the last couple of weeks by Boy in a Band talks about Max Martin, who over the last 15 years has written and produced most of the hits from artists like Katy Perry, Taylor Swift, Kelly Clarkson, Britney Spears, and the Backstreet Boys. This is a dude who clearly has some sort of secret on lock. 
Now, music is math, right? So is there some sort of formula for a popular song? Well, a lot of research has gone into that. On his site, Music Machinery, software developer and orchestral trombonist Paul Lemire ran through a bunch of recent hits in his custom pattern visualization software, and he saw something interesting. Check out this visualization of Adele's Rolling in the Deep. So those color patterns are beats, and those little connections inside the circle are sections of music that exactly line up. So you can see where the chorus is by how many connections there are. Now, check out Lady Gaga's Paparazzi. Now Kesha's TikTok, Taylor Swift's Fearless, definitely a pattern. And before you wonder about coincidence, here are some songs that aren't radio pop. Led Zeppelin's Stairway to Heaven, Dave Brubeck's Take Five, Dead Mouse's Raise Your Weapon, all different. So there's definitely a trick to catchy, stick in your head, jump up the charts pop. In so what do you guys think? Pop music is easy to remember, but sometimes some obscure music or rock music or some abstract music, for example, uh, what is that? Abstract jazz. It's yeah, it's uh, it's difficult to remember one melody or one or, or like the chorus because it has non-standard music. Mm -hmm. 2011, artificial intelligence researchers from the University of Bristol threw every top 40 song over the last 50 years into their own software to see if they could come up with an equation for the perfect pop song. They call the result the hit potential equation, and they use different factors like duration, tempo, and harmonic simplicity to try to predict what songs will be hits. For instance, right now, according to their equation, a good pop song should be harmonically simple, a little over three minutes long, dancey, but not like crazy 1980s dancey, and loud. Super loud. Now, some students at Rutgers named Tom Minglehart and Sean Ellis did something similar with the American charts and found similar results. As of 2010, a hit song is 114.2 beats per minute, 3 minutes and 59 seconds long, moderately danceable, and in the key of C major. Just add some lyrics about love and or the club, and you've probably got yourself a hit. So what do you think? Is it really that easy? I, I hope not. But I don't listen to any of these songs, and whenever I do listen to them, I find them annoying. So what does that put me at? Like, just a... But a lot of people think that those songs are annoying, but at the same time, they know the words. Because they've heard it a million times, it repeats, and it's so repetitive and so catchy. Or at least they know the melody. They can they can recognize it that hey I don't like that song I know that song and I don't like it. Well yeah of course easily it comes on and I'm like I hate that turned off. But more abstract stuff you have to listen to it for a while before you remember it. Oh yeah of course. Degrading thank you Edgar. True Let's statement. See. What else do we have? Here? Ah psychology. Music is a large part of many people's lives, especially to those that play musical instruments. Music can change people's mood at any time, whether they're working out, traveling, working, or just relaxing. Like other expressive arts, music has the power to evoke feelings, whether they're feelings of happiness, sadness, tranquility, or nostalgia. Oftentimes, people associate music with particular emotions and experiences. In a study at Bristol University, Dr. Harry Witchell and his peers found that simply playing 90-second snippets of five carefully selected songs, each evoking their own specific feelings or emotions, had a dramatic effect on the participant. For example, their heart rates appeared to slow down when they were listening to the music, perhaps due to concentration, and sped up rapidly when the music finished. Although it is hard to find music that means the same thing to a lot of people, it is obvious that certain sounds and their speed, especially in movies, can add to the emotion the creator intends for you to feel. With a lot of films, a strong score can actually make up for mediocre acting or dialogue. Daniel Bloomstein from the University of California found results that suggest that filmmakers manipulate sounds to create nonlinear analogs in order to manipulate our emotional responses. What? Non-linear analogs. What is that? Even? Analogs that do not line up. Yeah. Not perpendicular, not parallel. So this is 
this is when the music doesn't play to the movement of the actors, but plays to the emotion that you should feel during the sequence. Yeah. Yeah. I think that music in films definitely plays a big role. Absolutely. Look at every film and just just try to listen to the music and not the words and you have a feeling. Or go buy a soundtrack to soundtrack, a film. Soundtrack, yeah. Why do people buy soundtracks and listen to soundtracks? Because of the emotions that they felt from that film. Yeah. Finish a sentence. So, here's another music video that I like. I Jake like it. showed it to me. And uh, so, we're going to watch it. We're going to show it to you guys. I wish I found some better sounds no one's ever heard I wish I had a better voice to sing some better words I wish I found some chords in an order that is new I wish I didn't have to rhyme every time I sang I was told when I get older all my fears would shrink But now I'm insecure and I care what people think So this song right he here He has some nice tattoos He does too I don't know, my hands aren't that dirty though <clears throat> So this, this right here proves that words can be music the same as, as any song, influence, emotion, but just the chorus and even the verse in the song just incites emotion in most people, I would say mm -hmm. so. Nyabo, ah, Nayib, Nayib, I'm saying that wrong, Nayib probably. He said he's heard it, he he's likes it. it. Someone said they can sing all the words. Other person says good song, cool. Ah, so everybody likes this, nobody likes Big Bad Wolf. Chris, should we do our secret handshake on video? No, nah, it's secret. It's secret. Do you guys have a secret handshake with any of your friends? Or maybe a group. I had a I had a handshake with like a group of rappers one time. Really? Yeah. Every time we came to the studio, we shook hands a special way. Was it as complex as that? No, no. It was like a third of that. A third of that. That was pretty neat. All right, Naib. Um, I think I'm still probably saying your name wrong. Naib. Crystallize. Yes. Absolutely beautiful song. What? Wish we could turn back time to the good old days. Wish we could turn back time to the good old days. Hey, Naive, will you please turn off your microphone for us? <laughs> sorry. No, thank you. Sorry, sorry. Turn it on after the song. <laughs> smell will take me back to when I was young how come I'm never able to identify where it's coming from I'd make a candle out of it if I ever found it try to sell it never sell out of it I probably only sell one if it's in my brother because we have the same nose same clothes homegrown a stone's throw from a creek we used to roam but it would remind us of when nothing really mattered out of student loans and treehouse homes we all would take the ladder my, my name's blurry face and I Back time to the good old days when the mama sang us to sleep, but now we're stressed out. Okay, guys, so a few people asked for it, might as well play it because cinematography is just <laughs> the cinematography is great, the song is beautiful, and if this does not incite emotion.
That's awesome. That is that. Yeah, we have to listen to that again after. Nice. Ah, hey, Naib, is it Naib? I'm saying it wrong. I know. Naib, give us your microphone. Go ahead and give us a shout out. Yeah, how do you pronounce your name correctly? So Olga sent another video. Ah, uh, two shallow. cellos. Uh huh. Yeah, lots of awesome, awesome videos. You know, if you guys uh, want to send me more of these tracks and videos to listen to, you guys can find me on VK. Just look for Chris Maricos, or on YouTube or on Facebook, any of those places. Uh, so yeah, keep sending them. We'll definitely listen to all of them. We're going to be hanging out for a minute, so check out all of the stuff you send us. And if you haven't already, make sure that you check out uh, Sabotage, doing music in Yekaterinburg, Russia. And uh, today they just released an interview they did with a Russian artist named Detzel. Uh, maybe people in Russia know him. But, uh, yeah, lots of good music out there. And I'm... I'm a big fan of all different kinds of music, especially unusual, original music, you know? like Dating Dating is just amazing, yeah. Absolutely. Today, a bunch of people were talking about System of a Down. I really like System of a Down. And actually, some of the people from System, System of a Down have some traditional, uh, they, they do some traditional Armenian music. Really? Yeah. Huh. I, because I, I really from, never knew that. Yeah, guys from System of a Down are Armenian. Huh. That is an interesting fact. I've listened to System of a Down so long, I've never even known that. Yeah. So, I mean, a lot of people know System of a Down, but they don't, they don't exactly know uh, about that. You know? That's awesome. So, so you sent a link to your channel, right? I sent a link to my English channel. I'm going to send you guys a link to the music channel, too. So uh, make sure that you check it out. You now, if you want to leave a comment or whatever, tell me your opinion. And it will be great. So, you know, it's been a lot of fun talking with you guys about music. Uh, but... We got to go. We're going to check out some more of the music that you sent us. It looks like you guys sent just a lot of videos, so we have a lot of stuff to check out. Uh, thanks a lot for coming and joining us today, and next week we'll have another video for you. What, what do you think? We'll decide the topic later. Yeah. But uh, next week will actually be the last video that me and Jacob are doing together because I'm moving back to the United States. Well, I'm going on a long holiday, not really moving, but... Just going to go back to the United States for a while and uh, see what's happening over there. Yeah, next time you make a video, it'll be sunny and bright outside. Yeah, so uh, a lot of new stuff is going to be happening. There'll probably be some new people in the videos with me. So, But uh, next week, be here as usual. So thanks again for joining us. Chris and Mary Coase. Jake. And Jake. The dog. The dog. <laughs> Hey guys. Hello.